joining us, we have Bart and Sharon, and they are from the Grandfather Country Store. Bart is actually the owner, and Sharon is the manager. So thank you guys so much for coming in to talk with us today. Well, thank you for having us. Absolutely. We appreciate you braving the weather to come in. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. Now, go ahead and talk with us a little bit about Grandfather Country Store. For any of our viewers who have never actually stopped by, tell us a little bit about the store. Well, the store has been there since 1920. It was wow. started by a lady whom I had the pleasure to know in her later years. Uh, I knew her as Aunt Bill Estes. <laughs> And the store started in 1920, and the, the building is, uh, probably goes back to the late 1800s. And it has it started out as Blue Moon Station and changed owners and changed names. And the most recent names were have, have something having to do with Grandfather Mountain or Grandfather Country Store or one thing or another like that. And um, we, uh, at one time, it was a community center. Okay. And, uh, and we're trying to bring it back to that. Fantastic. Okay. So talk with us a little bit about what that means, a community center. What will that include? Well, we uh, have a lot of local people that uh, depend on us for, for conveniences and um, camaraderie and sitting by the wood stove. Um, we have, uh, we want to offer our services year round to the tourists and to the summer people. Um, we have a lot of people that stop in that are lost, that need directions, uh, a lot of <laughs> people that need to know how to get onto a trail or their GPSs don't work. Right. And what else? Well, the GPS, we have a sign on our door touting us as a um, uh, trauma center for GPS victims. <laughs> A lot of those trauma center for GPS yes. victims because uh, see what happens people people use their GPS they stop carrying maps right and they find themselves at the corner of Holloway Mountain Road and 221 where we are and they don't know where they are <laughs> and their GPS isn't helping them and they don't have a map so it brings us some uh, it brings us some trade so um, brings us a lot of trade brings us the a lot lost of trade. people <laughs> yes. the lost souls. Right. Yeah. stop by get some directions pick uh, up a few goodies we also are out. touting ourselves as a regional information center okay uh for outdoor activities because we're less than five minutes from trailhead to uh trailhead going over grandfather mountain right we're less than five minutes from the tonawa trail and from the mountain to sea trail we're less than five minutes from uh, Julian Price Park and Moses Cone Park. So we are right there. And so people can stop by our store. We can give them information. We can give them maps. We can tell them distances. And we can lecture to them for dressing too lightly in bad weather. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm sure you have a lot of people who seem to have that problem. Well, yeah, <laughs> we've got some horror stories of people who and showed up. We, we even we, have a lot of consignment items, and some of them are clothing because Perfect. people will come up and they need a, a coat, but they don't want to pay much for it. So it, we, are, we have a little bit of everything. Now talk with us a little bit about your merchandise. When people come in, what kinds of things can they purchase at the Grandfather Country Store? Well, we have uh, groceries and conveniences, drinks and ice cream. Um, we have, we try to do as much local as we can. So we have local jams and jellies, local honey, uh, we try to buy locally made toys and crafts and birdhouses. Um, we do have a lot of new items that are, you know, current product. Uh, we have a lot of antiques and consignment items. And what am I missing? I think you're pretty much, we've got uh, firewood, ice for yes. campers. We have camper supplies. And, and, um, um, well, I, and it's important to point out that we're working as hard as we can, striving, to carry local, local made uh, objects, items, jams, jellies, and so forth. And we're always on the lookout for, um, for people who have, uh, for craftsmen, mm -hmm. for, for artists and things like that, for people who have items, local people who want to market them and we might be able to market them for them. So we're, we're always in the, on the lookout. And it's, it's harder to find than uh, I had thought it would be. Right. See, I'd like to, for instance, be able to carry some nice quilts, but mm -hmm. quilts are very expensive and they move very slowly. And it is so. hard to find things that are priced so that we can resell them. And um, in this economy, people are really careful with their money. Right. Definitely. So is there one item that is a hot seller that everybody comes in for? 
I would say the birdhouses, the local okay. birdhouses during the, the summer are the fastest sellers for as far as locally made items. Okay. Of course, the local honey and the local jams and jellies that we have are very popular. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, I'd say that I'd say the birdhouses. Bird houses. Bill Gregg just down the road quarter of a mile makes our birdhouses okay. and he makes beautiful birdhouses and the price is very reasonable We're, we we have very few right now but during the summer we'll, we'll have more and it's an item that people passing through can pick up and throw in the back of the car right unlike a large f piece of furniture or something like that right right now can you talk with us a little bit about the importance of selling local prod products and kind of building these relationships with local vendors well, the, it's, it's one of the things people request. Mm -hmm. They want something that's f local. From, sometimes people from um, California want something that they got in North Carolina mountains. Right. So that's one of the reasons. But we want to support the local craftsmen and artisans. So, um, and also, I think people are tired of buying stuff from China. Right. We have and some things from China. And very often, a uh, person will pick it up because it's lovely, mm -hmm. and they'll look at it and they'll put it down. And they say, "I want something local." So, so you guys yeah. are the place to come for that. It yes, like. it's, it's very satisfying too because you get to know, you get to meet the people who are doing. Uh, but, but Betty Jo Hicks does does our um, a lot of our jams and jelly. She lives over in Deep Gap, and this little lady weighs maybe 90 pounds, <laughs> but it's spring steel. And and she is she's a fireball, and she makes these wonderful preserves, and we're so proud of this to be able to. to I, I I've been wanting to put their pictures uh, with the product, and because uh, I I like dealing with. Well, it makes sense. That you stop thinking about it. Dealing with local people because you right. know them, and you know, you know the product. Mm -hmm. now it's and good one of the things Bart and I've talked about, um, uh, playing with the idea of featuring some local artisans on our website mm -hmm. um, maybe once a month or every other month um, some people don't want their pictures on the internet though so but we are thinking about you know trying to expose um, to a wider group of people what we have by telling about some of these local things that we have Absolutely. that we're carrying Absolutely. now you mentioned the economy earlier how has the economy affected you guys <laughs> Pretty it drastically. <laughs> <laughs> it has murdered us. Yes, yeah, it has. Yeah. Death, death in the family. It's a, we, um, last year, in, nine, in 2013, the weather, of course, was right. a killer. It killed the ski season. It killed people who might want to come here for spring because winter held on through, as you know, through April and May and yeah. June. <laughs> and then summer never came. And so the people who would normally come here during the summer to escape the heat from down off the mountain didn't do it because they didn't want to come up here in, this, in the fog, ice, and rain. Right. And, um, and uh, fall finally arrived late, and, uh, but so many of the people had already done their vacations elsewhere. So it, it and we do a lot us. of camping support. We have a lot of campers that stop at the store. And you can't camp in the rain. Mm -hmm. Camping was way down. So we, uh, we suffered that. Um, but we're hoping for a good summer. Yes. Definitely. I think we're all hoping for yes, a good we're summer. <laughs> we're praying for a good summer. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Now, Bart, why did you decide to purchase the Grandfather Country oh, Store? Oh, I was afraid you were going to ask me that question. <laughs> well, I've known that store since 1968. I've shopped there since 1968. And I saw what it was like mm -hmm. back when Neil and Mary Cashin from Wilkes County owned it. And they were treasures. Oh, they were, they were good mountain people and are wonderful people. And I've seen it go down over the years. It's kind of gone up and down. It's gone up and down, but basically go down. And it's falling, it was falling apart and getting, getting pretty ratty looking and, uh, through a, ver uh, a succession of owners. And um, I noticed that they lost the local, lost the locals. Mm -hmm. um, who stopped going there. And I bought a piece of property uh, in 1976 that adjoins the store. And I, I've, I have a home there, and I've lived there since 76. And um, I, the, the store really needed help. And I sort of I had a feel for it. I felt sorry for it and sad. And 
it came on the market at a very reasonable price, and um, I, I saw it, and I bought it, and uh, and now I'm broker than I've ever been in my <laughs> life. <laughs> Sounds like you love what you do. Then. Oh, uh, we love it. I think I can I speak for you on that. Yes. We enjoy <laughs> we enjoy what we do. It's and better. we do have plans. We do have some goals for the future. Okay. Um, uh, it it has taught us that it really needs to be a place that has beer and wine, like a grocery store right. would have, and that we need to seriously look into offering some kind of food products. Okay. We really need to have um, a little deli or something. A lot of people want to eat, and they want something more than a mm -hmm. pack yeah. of crackers. Yeah. Right. The, the beer and wine issue is really touchy because it's a dry county. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, we've tried to get, um, we've tried to, work through our representative and the ABC board to make a change and I, I'm working on it. Uh, we failed our first attempt. I'm going to try it again th this year. And the um, grill, the grill, the grill thing is monstrous because um, the health department requirements would absolutely murder us. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, I don't think we could put in a grill for less than $60,000. And if we had a high volume of traffic, like in downtown Blowing Rock, we could do that. But our traffic volume is very low, especially now with the economy the way it is. So right. But we turn away people um, all year long that come in and they're requesting food and beer and wine. So we're, we're seriously looking we're losing, that. We're losing the business there. We redirect that. them. Yeah. To, um, Send them to Blowing Rock. Send them go, <laughs> to, go to uh, Bistro Roca and um, um, F like, foggy Rock, yeah. Well, when they're asking for restaurants, yes. And canyons, oh, okay. oh. yeah. But when they're shopping, they're just shopping for beer and wine. The closest place is Blowing Rock. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. yeah. Sounds like you guys have some great goals and some things you're working towards. Mm -hmm. Now, have there been any surprises that have come along with owning <laughs> and managing this store? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Many of the things that we thought needed to be happening, we were wrong. Um, and we've just listened to mm -hmm. what people want and what they're asking for. Um, and of course, just the, the complications of running a business. Right. Uh, Neither yeah, one no. of us have mm -hmm. ever done this before. No, so. it's our first mm -hmm. business. So. And, it's all um, brand new. And um, I, I bought the store in part because of her. I saw her managing it uh, the year before I bought it, and I saw her doing a great job. I didn't know her. Uh, and uh, when the store came in the market, I called her and asked her if she wanted to manage it for me. She said, yeah, okay. And that's, <laughs> that was a, that's, the, that's the smartest thing I've ever done in my life, uh, was to hire, hire Sharon. And, uh, well, we communicate well. We make a good team. We just yeah. need um, to step up our game a little bit. The uh, surprise is, I thought we were going to be a grocery store more than we are. I thought people right. would be coming, and so we stocked up on a lot of groceries, you know, canned goods, things like that, and they just hardly came off the shelf. But as Sharon has pointed out to me, people come to us for emergency food. Mm -hmm. People who are running for the weekend or the week or one thing or another, or, or locally, I've, I've run out of butter and I've got to cook a cake, you know, and so they, we've got butter. And, and lots of campers. That, oh, we forgot our marshmallows. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it, it's definitely emergency food. I remember the gentleman who came in and said, my daughter wants to make s'mores. And do you do you have anything? <laughs> <laughs> and we had it all. We had it all. We had the chocolate, the graham crackers, and, and the marshmallows. He was thrilled to death. You'd have thought... You'd have thought it was I'd done him a huge favor or something. Right. Yeah, and but. one time, a little boy and his family came in, and they had gotten Jiffy Pop, the old-fashioned mm -hmm. Jiffy Pop, the year before. And they were camping at Price, and we did not have it. And he cried. Oh, and goodness. I felt so terrible. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. you know, we tried it to, to listen and do what we know what people are going to ask for. Absolutely. Right. So. Yeah, our, our customers have given us a real good education. Yeah. Great. And it's delightful. I think my True. favorite thing about the store is meeting the people and hearing people's stories and getting to know people that come back. Right. So that's that's a great deal of fun. Yeah, we're, we're getting people who are, who are saying, uh, I used to come here with my grandfather when I was a little boy. Aww. And they had their grandson with them. Mm -hmm. 
That's see, wonderful. We've had that happen more than once. Yeah, and it's, yes. it's very touching. And the people, most people are, are delightful. Mm-hmm. We especially like the Latino families from South Southeast Florida, right. from Dade County, because they come there, they bring grandma and grandpa and their children, and th- the children are lovely, and they're well behaved, and they are just, it's a delight to, to deal with them, it's a, and uh, it's very enjoyable. It's a, it's a delight to deal with our customers in general, but we have some that are just more delightful. Wonderful. Well, it yes. sounds like a great place to stop by. Now, what are your hours? Well, we're open year-round. Okay. Our hours change, so you really need to check our website. Okay. In the wintertime, we're closed on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Okay. Um, spring, summer, fall, we're open seven days a week. And it varies. We, right now, we're open from 1130 till 6, except on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And around May and June is when we change our to summer hours, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of depends yeah. on the traffic. Okay. But uh, in the summertime, it's usually 9 to 7. Um, on the weekends, we stay open till 8 because of the campers and the people that check into the cabins at the last minute. Um, so I hate to be so wishy-washy, but they do vary. Just check the website. Yeah, we have, to, we have to run our hours according to the volume of uh, business. Right. It's not like 7-Eleven where they can stay open. <laughs> open early and stay open late. Yeah. We, 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 we can't do that. Right. So what's your website? It's www.grandfathercountrystore.com. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much oh, for coming in you. to talk with us today. Well, thank you for having thank us. You. We've enjoyed Absolutely. this. And we will be back right after these messages with more of the Mountain Television Network.